What's going on everyone? It's Tay with Spectacular Gadgets. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at a smartwatch by Cospet. This is the Cospet Magic 4 smartwatch. And thank you to the kind people over there at Cospet for sending this smartwatch over for me to try out on the channel. If you're interested in the Magic 4 smartwatch, go over to their website, which the link is in the description, and you can purchase one for $49.99. And lastly, please bear with me as I know that this is a rather long video, but I go into detail on setup, usage, and pretty much everything else. Let's do this! Spectacular Gadgets. At the time of this recording, this watch is going for $49.99. We'll do a quick box tour and then go ahead and get into it. As you can see, there is very little information on the box. You do get a picture of the watch. Also, they have their website, as you see right here. And then lastly, there are two colors. You have black and then there is pink. They checked off pink, so they sent me the pink watch. Also note, this is waterproof. This watch has 20 sport modes, 10 days battery life, waterproof up to 50 meters, plus a heart rate and blood pressure monitor. So here's the watch. And they give you this little silicone watch band. You have two buttons here, nothing on the left side. And then you simply have the charging cable. So it looks like it's their special type of charging cable. So you can only use this charging cable to charge this watch and nothing else. And the last thing that I'm pulling out is the Magic 4 manual. Keep this handy because this is going to show us how to operate the smartwatch. And then lastly, we have this thank you letter, which is actually the warranty card. First things first, let's go ahead and take a better look around the watch. But first I need to go ahead and peel off this um, plastic on the screen as you see here. So once I take that off, I can get a better look at the screen. And you see a little bit of bezels, but you also see they have labeled the power button so you know exactly where that is. And then they have the back button. So the power button has a little stripe of red around it and um, the buttons stick out a little more than I like them to. But again, $50. If you want to go ahead and change out the watch band to something else, you can do that easily by just pushing that little metal piece. It will release the watch band. It's on the top and the bottom as you see. Now in the middle, this is the sensor. So this is going to take your heart rate and use it for all the activities. Now just above that is the charging area. The included cable will magnetically attach to the back of the watch once you have it on the correct way. Now I would like to go ahead and test how strong the magnet is on this charging cable. And as you see with a few bounces, it came off. So it's not the strongest magnet. So just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and take a look at the manual to see how to go ahead and set it up and get started. So the first thing that I notice is before I can even use the product, I'm going to go ahead and charge it for about one to two hours. What I'm going to use is my battery pack because the provided cable is rather short. So this is the best way for me to go ahead and get this thing charged. You can also go ahead and plug this into your computer if you have that available. The USB end will go into the battery pack and of course the other end will magnetically attach to the back of the Magic 4. Once plugged in, it automatically turns on. You see Cospit as a greeting screen and then we go directly to charging actually you see uh, we have the time and then it has, let's see if it'll go back. Um, it goes to charging as you see. So we know that we're charging. When you have it plugged in to charge, there's nothing really else you can do with the watch. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it charge up and we'll be right back. The watch has been charging for about two hours, but let me show you what I mean. When it's charging, you really won't be able to do anything. You won't be able to interact with the watch until you actually just pull the charger off. Once you remove the charger, you'll see the default watch face. And if I pull down from the top, I'll get my quick toggles, but also the battery percentage, which is 
So taking a look at the toggles, I'll go ahead and first do the settings gear, and this is about, and then the app download, which we'll take a look at in a few. And if I go ahead and keep scrolling, I have theater mode, reset power off, and menu view, brightness, and vibration off. Let's take a look at brightness because it seems kind of dim to me. And as you see, as I am using the brightness toggle, nothing's really happening, and I'm gonna show you why, but I'll hit back, the back button again, and the back button again. And if you keep hitting it, it'll go ahead and turn the screen off. You hit it again and it will wake it back up. Pressing the power button does the same. If you slide to the right, this is your list of activities for the day. So there's no data there because I have not to put the watch on, but you have activities, sleep and steps. Keep moving over to the right. You have the beats per minute as well as your blood pressure readings. The next screen is weather. Get that data once you have it connected to your smartphone. This goes for the shutter button as well to take a picture or record video. You can control the music on your phone by the watch. And then you also have a breathe reminder. Swiping from the left gets you this fun little interactive uh, menu of all the little features that this watch has. So I can just go ahead and cycle through whatever little feature or app that I'm trying to get to. And what I do notice is this little watch has a game function. So if I go ahead and line game up, I'll select games. And I notice that it has two games, Youngbird and 2048. So if I select Youngbird, um, do note that this screen is a capacitive touch screen. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this again. Now this is not, I'm not a pro or anything at this. This is not my favorite game, but just to show you that um, what the responsiveness of this touch screen looks like. So if you wanna play games, you can do that. But what I'm interested in is, let's go ahead and test out that app download. So once I hit that, this little QR scan code came up. I'll take my device and take a picture of that. And this comes up. So this little link will come up and it will take me directly to the Google Play Store. If you're using the iPhone, it'll take you to the App Store. And I'll go ahead and install the app. Now this app called DaFit, I am familiar with because I've used it on a few other budget smartwatches. So let's see how it has changed from the last time I used it. The first thing you'll get is the profile page. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in my information and then I'll come right back. So this screen is more like a dashboard. So um, you have a few things here. It does say uh, you have steps here, you have your sleep and your outdoor running activity. And that's pretty much it until you actually add the smartwatch. So when I hit add smartwatch, it's asking for location. So this is the part where you'll see that Magic 4 came up. So I didn't have any issues there. And then a photo of it. So I have the correct watch, I'll select that. And now you'll notice that a few more um, things were added to my dashboard. So I still have sleep, but I have heart rate and continuous heart rate, blood pressure, and then your outdoor activities such as running. And then you see the steps started to come up. So obviously I don't have any steps yet, I haven't moved, but now my date and time is correct on the watch because it is connected via Bluetooth. So here on this screen, I do get to see the battery percentage on my phone. So I'm still at 99%. We also have a nice list of options. So you see watch face notifications, alarms, but let's first take a look at watch faces. I'm curious here. So um, the first one is the watch face one, which is on the watch by default. We saw that in the beginning. So we have that, but if I go ahead and select watch face two, so when I select these watch faces, I notice that they do change fairly quickly. No hesitation or anything like that. At the bottom it says more watch faces. So let's take a look at that. So this is where you can actually get some more watch faces. And it looks like they have plenty here to choose from. Now this list looks like way more than what I remember when I first tried this app. So you have plenty to choose from here. So I'm just gonna select this one and we're going to go ahead and download the watch face. Now it's loading on the watch and it's also loading on the phone. And I actually am going to fast forward this and speed it up because it did take quite some time actually just for one watch face to download. Here it is on the watch now and I think it looks pretty cool. And you'll notice it's down at the bottom. So I'm gonna go back to more watch faces and what I'm doing here is I just wanna see how many watch faces um, can be downloaded. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take this one. And as you notice, it took off the first one I downloaded. And so we can only really have six watch faces on the app. 
FYI, the watch faces are not interactive. Let's continue with the options. And the next thing we're gonna take a look at is notifications. This is how you'll have notifications come to your watch so you can be notified. So if I toggle on phone, you'll see that I have to allow certain permissions. So like phone calls and contacts, and then you'll have to actually go into the app and set those permissions in order to allow this app to go ahead and you know log your phone calls and your contacts and stuff like that. So if you're okay with that, go ahead and hit allow as the phone permission and then any other apps that you see on this list that you possibly want to use to be notified. The next option is alarms. They give you three to set. You have the shutter button option. So go ahead and set permissions. Next on the list is you have this others category. And the first thing I see is find device. So if I go ahead and press find device, take a listen. The watch will vibrate for you in order to help you locate it. The next thing is time format. You have 12 hours or 24 hours. So they have reminders to move. So a lot of smartwatches have that continuous heart rate detection. We already have that on and we use that. You can control phone music, um, battery saving. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle on control phone music so we can test that out. Languages is in English. Now auto lock, let's go ahead and change that to um, slightly longer. I'll go ahead and do 20 seconds and hit done so it can lock that into place. We also have quick view, which is already toggled on. You have valid period, which looks like it's all day. Drink water. You have the heart rate warning. We have weather. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to Fahrenheit because that's what we use and I'll hit done. At the very bottom, you see physiological cycle reminder. Now, if you toggle this on, this is for us females that want to keep track of time of the month and put all our details in there. So this is very helpful when you need it. Now, if we go back to the main screen, the last thing we see is upgrade. You're gonna select this to make sure that your firmware is up to date. So it looks like we have the latest version. The last page of this app is titled My. So this is information about you, but this is where your goal settings will be for your steps. So select that and pick the amount of steps you wanna do. And then you have background operation protection guide and then about. Now I'm going to remove the Galaxy Watch 4 and place the Magic 4 smartwatch on my wrist and get a good feel and fit and it feels snug and comfortable. I'm gonna go ahead and try out the blood pressure and this is the reading that it gave me for my first reading using the watch and it'll go ahead and put that data on the app and every time it measures it, it will go ahead and place it on the app. Your most current reading will remain on the watch. The next thing I'm gonna do is take a look at the heart rate and 8384 is about what I typically get. And to show you, um, I'll go ahead and put the Galaxy Watch 4 back on. And as you see, 85. Let me show you the shutter button. So I'll go ahead and select shutter and it'll find its way there. And I'll select the middle icon and hit it again. And as you see, it's asking me permissions about the camera. Let's get familiar with these quick toggles. So if I select this theater mode, I just toggled it on. And what it does is it lessens the brightness as well as it takes off vibration. The brightness toggle is self-explanatory. Um, as you see, the brightness is actually working this time. And the reason it wasn't working before is because I had the low power mode on or it was on by default. So no matter if you adjust the brightness, it will not change if that is toggled on. You have the vibration toggle and to the left of that, you have the Bluetooth connection status. You have the settings toggle. Swiping up from the bottom is where you'll get your notifications. I am receiving a phone call on my phone, which is notifying me on my watch. I can silence this by pressing that yellow button and the phone will still um, ring, but the watch will stop notifying me. And as you see, I have some missed calls. If I get a phone call and I press the red button, this makes the caller go directly to voicemail. It stops the phone from ringing as well as notifying me on the watch. And let me answer your question before you ask it. No, you cannot take calls using the watch. 
The next thing is player. And if you remember earlier, we went ahead and said to control phone music via the watch. So this is how you can do that. As long as that is toggled on, you can go ahead and control the music. And before I forget, yes, you can go ahead and change the watch faces directly from the watch. It's the six that you can choose from. So you won't be able to download new ones from the watch, but you'll be able to go ahead and switch the watch faces that are already downloaded. Let's discuss the battery on this watch. Uh, this watch has a 230 milliamp per hour battery. If you're going to use this watch without it being in the power save mode, when I did it, I pretty much had to charge the watch every day. Um, I wasn't able to get the sleep tracking in like I wanted to if I wanted to wear the watch the next day. But when I did put it in power save mode, I was able to get uh, about a week and four days before it died on me and you're not going to be able to get your notifications pushed through to you. Your vibration will be turned off. Uh, your brightness will be lowered in this power saving mode. But again, it still gets your steps. I was still able to track my sleep. I could pull my blood pressure. I could pull my heart rate when I wanted to. I would just have to go and fetch that information and that data you know, by myself manually. Would I recommend this watch? And I would say I most definitely will. Um, at first I was kind of skeptical about it. You know, the watch band felt kind of cheap and I'm just used to, you know, different watches such as like Apple or Samsung, but this watch gave me everything that I wanted. Plus on none of my other watches was I able to get a blood pressure monitor type of, you know, reading. So that was a first for me and that you know the fact that it's waterproof and that the battery can last this long in power save mode is an absolute plus well that about wraps it up for this video i want to thank everyone for taking the time to chill with me as we go through this journey and until next time everyone i want you all to have a spectacular day later